Go ahead. All right. Um, first, I'd like to thank the members of the um, Cable Advisory Board for, um, I'm sorry. First of all, I'd like to thank the members of the Cable Advisory Board for taking action the last time I was here and deeming Mr. Bennett's show as adult content and advising the Comcast to move the show from the current slot of 9 to 10 to after 10 o'clock, which is a safe harbor hour. Um, I won't repeat myself on a lot of stuff I said the last time because we all know what, was, uh, what I came to present the last time. It's on the record. Um, what I did come here for is to talk about what has happened since the show has been moved to 1130. Um, as you are well aware, Comcast gave Mr. Bennett a written warning on June 13th saying that, please be advised that this letter constitutes notice that the Big T Talk and Variety Show will be subject to suspension for 90 days if there's any other further violations of Section 3 of the Community Access Rules and Regulations. Um, looking under the rules and regulations that I have here, I think this is the most updated version. Maybe you changed a couple of words, but um, under Section 3, Number three, four, five, six, seven. Number three, no libelous, slanderous, or legal material. Number four, no obscene material, sexually explicit conduct, or material soliciting or promoting unlawful conduct. Number five, no material which incites violence or harmful acts on other persons. Um, number six and number seven are not relevant to what I'm going to be talking about here. Um, before I get into what I have to say in terms of these shows that have come on after this time period, I have been uh, somewhat disturbed and somewhat concerned about the comments from Mr. Bennett and Mr. Broon um, on future shows that have come on after this warning has been put down. I've heard some um, what I would consider to be slanderous or defaming remarks mm -hmm. in which um, I've been, my sexuality has been called into question, um, that I have some, somehow a, a gay roommate, which is new news to me, or a gay roommate in college, which is new news to me. And, not only is it brand new, new news to me, but I don't see the relevance upon that on his content being removed or him addressing what he said on his show. Um, also, he's said on several occasions that because I'm black, I must have somehow intimidated the Cable Advisory Board into making their decision because I'm black, so boo. Um, this type of material that I heard here is just out, not only outrageous, but it's also slanderous um, and it's also defaming which goes back to the section three, content number, number three, no libelous slanders or legal material being on the shell. This has been repeated time and time and time again. Um, this has also been addressed online as well. There's been comments made online. I have evidence to support my point that Mr. Brune has made these comments online that I am actually gay, that I have a gay roommate as well. Um, I have that material and I am looking into how I can address that legally because I think that's also quite outrageous for somebody to actually come out there and say this stuff and promoting a type of an agenda like I have some type of vendetta to knock somebody off the air. This is not about free speech. It's never been about free speech. I'm a journalist. been a journalist for about 20 years. Went to school for English. I love English. I love the Constitution. I love the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, all the amendments. This is about a contract violation. This is about somebody who signed a contract, and when they signed the contract, they said they adhere to all the rules within this contract. On page four of Community Access Producers' Responsibilities, it says the community access producer must adhere to all the commu community access rules and regulations stated with here and is responsible for ensuring that the program. You're out of order. Yes, I am. This is the same guy that's got me in fog with a Nazi party, Ku Klux Klan, and other organizations I have nothing to do with. Mr. Bennett, this is not about free speech. This is about a contract violation. This is not about free speech. This is about a contract violation. This is not about free speech. This is about a contract violation. 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 This they don't see that, do they? Got to be tied up with the Nazi party, the Ku Klux Klan, out. and all these other organizations, you lying bastard. Get out. Not one of those organizations am I involved in. It's a vendetta, and those people are stupid. Get out. Because they're listening to you. Well, excuse me, if he's leaving, I'll have to leave too. <laughs> but uh, I was a teacher for 25 years, and I saw a lot of the stuff that uh, uh, is going on in the school today. And he's what he's a whack.
I'm also studying to become a teacher also, and I think this is one of the situations where if I do become a teacher, I would love, love to teach an individual or students about the First Amendment, the rights, and the fact that if you have a problem with something, you should be able to speak up, speak your mind, and say, hey, look, I don't like what you're saying because of my freedom of speech, I have the right to say, look, I don't like what you're saying, I want something done about it, I want to speak out about it. Uh, I wish I was at Central, actually, I can say something about those, that, damn, that damn newspaper up there. Um, but going back on uh, section number C. Oh. Would you like to recess? Yeah, recess? That's fine. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Anybody need a drink of water while we're at it in the bathroom? Dave, you all set? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, meeting back in, back in session. Okay. Um, I'll be as brief as possible. I'll be as quickly as possible. I don't want to take a lot of your time. Um, I'm sorry. Just It's my voice. Sorry about that. Um, section C, community access producers responsibilities. It says right here, the community access producer must adhere to all the community access rules and regulations stated with here within and responsible for ensuring that the program and the individuals involved in the production adhere to the rules and policies set forth in this document. A producer reads this, they sign a contract. That means that, hey, look, I'm going to adhere to this stuff within the contract. This is not about freedom of speech. It's about a person violating the contract, breaking the promise that he has made when he signed this contract. Simple, that's it. Um, I presented uh, 33 DVDs to each member of the committee. I hope you all had a time, an, an opportunity to read that or watch the, the footage. Um, on August 24th, Mr. Bennett made a threat towards me on air. One of the things we talked about at the last meeting was that we can't stop a lot of this stuff because it's live. It's not tape, it's live, so we can't do anything until, because it's live, it's live. Well, he made the threat to me on tape at 11.30 at night, which meant this was taped at 9 o'clock, because I, if I'm correct, this window's between 9 to 10 to be in the studio, and it was shown at 11.30. A threat was made to me in which he said, and with this Connecticut blogger, he's a bastard. He's a very evil, vindictive person, and yes, I openly say that I won't have a problem at all spending a couple, spending a couple of nights in jail for smacking him right in his face. I'll have no problem with that when I meet him face to face. I will knock him on his ass. I will smash him, and that's not a threat. It's a goddamn promise. So I gotta say what I gotta say. And John McGowan says, and you got a right to say it. No, you don't. You have a right to say that on Comcast. It's against the rules. It's clearly against the rules. Okay, um, September 7th, one of the main problems that we had that we determined that this was an adult program was that he advocated that residents go out and shoot immigrants. And he advocated that he wants to shoot immigrants. September 7th. They need to be shot. They're criminals. What is wrong with me saying shoot these, shoot these bastards? Kill them dead and bury them in their own damn country, not here. What's wrong with that? And then in the background we hear shots of guns. Mr. McGowan says, nothing. There's plenty wrong with that. That's why the program was moved in the first place. I mean, we clearly have some problems here. You sent him a letter on June 13th saying if you keep it up, we're gonna knock you off for 90 days. It's not getting the message, folks. I mean, how many, I'm not, how many more times do I need to come up here every three months and present this? Again, I think, it is, unfortunately, right. it is out of our hands. It is in the hands of Comcast. Yes, so my question, is, my question is directed at Comcast now. The last time we were here, we, we talked about a lot of the stuff, the content that was on the show, um, the sexually explicit content that was on the show the threats of violence on the show. And I think one of, the, one, of the, one of the arguments was that the show was live. It wasn't much you can do because it was live. Now we have a taped show. I want to understand, since a threat was made towards me, and I would just want to add that I did call the Danbury Police Department about this, and I did make a complaint about this. Um, there wasn't enough at this point to force them to make an arrest on top of Mr. Bennett, but they are very aware of this situation. I want to know why, if this thing was taped between 9 to 10, did somebody review this stuff before it went on the air? We got something here from August 24th when my life was threatened. And I think about my, my life, I'm thinking about my, my, my life, my wife, my kid. 
I don't know what this guy's gonna do. You saw him here. The guy here on the seventh. He said the he repeated the exact same thing that resulted in his in his show being moved. That one determining factor, in which although I think there's a lot more, there's a, there's a whole lot more because he did a lot of stuff. The sexually explicit stuff is out of control, and he's and he blames it on the individual instead of him making that him making the comment. He blames me, saying I set him up with that. Like I'm going to call a 15 year old girl and tell her to call the call the show and, and say this stuff. It's ridiculous. It's outrageous. I don't have to do this. He does a very good job burying himself. So I want to know how is it that these two remarks on these two dates got past the screening process between 10 o'clock to 11.30 and that went on the air. I think as far as I know, I think that currently that tape is not reviewed before it goes on. The um, it's reviewed as it's being recorded. But obviously, there's a very short turnaround time right. between the time that it's recorded and then it goes on the air. One of the uh, provisions of the access rules uh, is that uh, shows can be reviewed. I'm not sure exactly how to say it. They can be reviewed prior to make sure they comply with the rules prior to airing. So we're looking. Our corporate legal department is looking into uh, that applying that process possibly in this situation for future tapes. Uh, are, do you see some type of concern in the remarks that he made on those two dates? Uh, I would have to take a look at the, the tape, but from what you said, they do sound uh, like they would be of concern to you. Right. Um, I'm just wondering, something. I just think something needs to be done here, and I understand that the Cable Advisory Board can't do much anymore. And again, I do thank you very much for what you have done um, in deeming this thing adult content, but I do really think that at this point, um, something needs to be done about this because it's clear to me and it's clear to a lot of people that I'm here representing that this is not going to stop that he does not he did not learn that hey look there's some things you just can't say this is a contract this is a contract violation this has nothing to do with freedom of speech it just doesn't um, and you said even in your letter if this continues your show's going to be knocked off for 90 days I just showed you two episodes two instances in which you violated that very rule. Again. And those tapes have been forwarded to our corporate legal department, so they are re reviewing them to see if they're in violation of the rules. Okay. So they, they do have them down in Philadelphia right now. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else more to say. I think, uh, again, thank you very much for your time and your consideration and the opportunity to speak here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have, um,